Hi, today I'm going to show you uh, these elevated beds that we made. A little bit about those and I'm going to show you how we plant greens and lettuces in these or in any bed uh, on the ground or elevated, raised bed, what have you. Uh, real quickly about these particular elevated beds. Uh, we saw these at a, uh, at a uh, uh, assisted living home in northern Wisconsin one time and we thought they were pretty cool. They were, they were made, uh, I believe, for those folks to be able to garden uh, and they were quite a bit larger than these, but they were made for those folks to be able to garden um, without so much bending. And uh, I just thought it was a neat idea, not just for that, but uh, not just for the ergonomics and the um, uh, ease of getting to your crop at this level, but also because uh, it, bunnies can't get in here, rabbits can't get in and, uh, and chew off our, uh, your vegetables. Squirrels and whatnot can get up here and birds and things, and sometimes they get up here and dig and, and make a mess of things, but I'll show you how we deal with that. Uh, in a little bit too. Anyway, uh, we made these beds, we made several of them, and uh, they just look cool. They're a lot of fun and very easy and uh, to come out and just pick it uh, without having to bend over if you're thinning or weeding or anything like that. So, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll probably put some sort of plan or build one and film it and show you how we did that. It's real simple. Now, as far as uh, uh, today, with plant, we're going to plant some greens and some lettuces. What, what we did was we prepared these beds. We put in uh, uh, a mixture of compost, topsoil, and a little bit of manure and mixed it up. And then I, what I like to do is put a, a thin layer of maybe an inch or so of uh, potting soil on the top. And that just uh, creates a nice, soft... Uh, foundation for the seeds and it's it's uh, easy to work with and it's a little mo more moisture retentive. It doesn't dry out quite as quickly it seems as, uh, as the topsoil or uh, regular uh, ground does. So what, what I did on each of these two is with these greens I've marked off with a ruler uh, every five or six inches and on each side so I've, I've got some guideline as to where my rows are going to be, leaving about five, six inches between each one. And with each of these are relatively small, small uh, elevated beds. We only get, you know, eight, eight rows that are maybe only three feet wide. So it's not a large, a large thing, but uh, it'll work for that, that format of, of uh, every five, six inches will work for a, a bed on the ground, a raised bed, what have you. Just it's a, a good number to, uh, to use. And so what, what we'll do, or what I do, is following these little dots that I've marked where the row should be, I just take a stick or a dowel, anything like that. If I'm on the ground and it's a larger bed, I have a, a longer dowel. But for these little ones, I just take a little stick and just kind of eyeball kind of make a little little uh, mark there and then when I've got everything kind of laid out I'll go in and I'll just kind of work it just ever so gently and make a furrow, a small furrow maybe quarter inch, half inch deep according to what your seed packets say how deep, usually with greens it's no more than a quarter inch deep and just make that little furrow. Now here I've got nothing more. I'm just following that dot to this dot. I'm trying to make that eyeball that out. Now I'll just work it in a little bit. And this this top layer of uh, potting soil is also a nice foundation for, for seeds getting their start. It's soft and even if you compress it a little bit like I'm doing here it's pliable and soft enough that the seeds can can uh, sprout pretty handily, which is why it's used for potting. So I'll do that here, about a quarter inch deep, no more than a quarter inch deep. And along the way, 
if I find any any stones or anything uh, substantial that uh, might inhibit seed from sprouting or uh, not inhibit it from sprouting but uh, inhibit it as a come from coming up out of the ground like if there's a stone in the way or something like that I'll just pick that out and set it aside into the middle of the row. I used to throw uh, stones and things like that out just toss them out into a little pile but I read somewhere somebody mentioned that uh, the earth needs minerals your soil needs minerals and it gets it from stones kind of leaching out in the process of rain and so forth so I just leave them in there now I just move them out of the way of the row where my seeds are going to be okay so now I've got my rows laid out and I'll take my seeds and first of all what I've done is I've laid this out on paper uh, I just drew a little schematic of I've got four beds in this little spot here next to the house with my rows and I kind of figured out what I'm going to uh, plant in each bed and I'll also I'll take this in and I'll write it in my notebook in my gardening journal what is what and I'll also mark each row with a little well not each row but each section with a little marker like here I've got Silvetta I'll just put that in where that goes so I so I'll know what each row is uh, after I seed it and as it comes up because I guarantee you that uh, if you don't mark it down either via a stick or on paper or both you'll forget what's what's what and what you've planted so what I'll do and in this particular this is the third bed I've actually got Silvetta, Red Kamasuma, and Peppercrest going in this small bed. Those are small packets that I have for, that I'm just experimenting to see with because I haven't grown those before. The Silvetta I've grown before, but the Red Kamatsuma and the Peppercrest, that this particular uh, variety, I have not grown before. So this is this is kind of an experimental bed, and I only got a single packet of, uh, of little seeds of these and the other beds will have more uh, more fully of one or two crops in each one. I'm just going to tap try to get two three seeds per every every two inches at least as it happens with these tiny seeds a lot more come out it's very hard to to uh, gate or to accurately dispense them in that even like there's a whole bunch that just came out which is okay because as they sprout and grow they'll need to be thinned anyway and we'll just pull those thinnings out and eat them uh, or give them to the ducks or the rabbit or rabbits or anything like that or we'll just throw them in salads and eat them ourselves so there, there's no loss so now I'll just cover these up gently with about a quarter inch making sure I don't have any stones or large twigs that will impede the growth firmly but gently press down on the row so that there's good contact between the seed and the soil and I could as I often do is uh, just take twigs and mark where the row where the rows are, the boundaries of the row, so that when I go to weed or before if weeds are coming up before the sprouts come up, uh, I won't accidentally get into the row if they're coming up at around the same time. Or I'll know where things are. With these beds, I've got these marks here. And so I can also kind of visually know where rows are, so you don't really need to mark them. But on the ground, I don't have this sort of setup, and uh, so I'll use twigs just to mark where the rows are, the boundaries or the ends of each row. And that's what I'll do when I'm on the ground and I don't have uh, a frame like this that's marked on the outside. So what I'll do. Uh, I'll mark 
these rows with what's in each row, both via a, here I just seeded some pepper press. If I'm going to do, say, these three rows or half row, half of the bed or what have you, I'll probably do three rows because this is an experimental bed just to see how these things turn out and how they are. I'll mark the end row. So these three rows will be pepper crest, the next three rows will be uh, red kamatsuma, and then the next uh, couple rows will be silvetta. I've grown silvetta before, but the other two I haven't, so this is kind of an experiment just to see how they taste, how they grow, just to learn about them, just to do something different and a little fun. As I said a little earlier, uh, anywhere there's new undisturbed dirt, soil, uh, squirrels just love to dig in it, and the chipmunks and the birds and all that sort of thing. So what we do to uh, kind of give us uh, a little help to keep them from digging in it, we'll take uh, screens like this. This is part of an old dog coop either something like this or some chicken wire or some sort of uh, uh, fencing of some sort and we'll lay these just over the top like this or we'll take chicken wire or uh, uh, hardware netting hardware cloth and we'll just real lightly staple it to one end and then maybe one or two staples here and as the things start to come up it's easy enough to pull it up weed put it back down but these this alone this sort of thing alone is enough to uh, to keep those animals like chipmunks and squirrels from getting in birds of course from getting in here and disturbing disturbing the soil what I'll probably do or what I'll have to do with this particular it's just a little bit too short so I'll, I'll put a uh, one by two strip of wood here and I'll just rest it on that. But that's the idea, just to have these in here to uh, offer some small barrier to, to those animals that want to mess with the bed. It's starting to rain right now, uh, so we're going to have to quit filming. But I wanted to show you uh, the watering when we're all done planting and everything, uh, how to water and just make sure that everything is well well watered but that you're not washing away the seeds or being too rough with it so real quickly um, just just get your hose uh, one of those uh, attachments where you get like a nice shower a gentle shower and just go over the whole bed on the ground or in these elevated beds and just make sure that you water thoroughly that's real important just to make sure that everything all of the seeds um, are well soaked not to the point where there's a pool, pools of water on the bed, but to the point where uh, it is well watered below the surface, uh, at least a, a, an inch or two below the surface at least. So just be real gentle, go over with a nice gentle shower with a hose attachment and uh, make sure that everything is well watered and make sure it stays watered uh, until things start to come up. Thanks for watching.